So we've learned that the range is a very weak measure of spread, and we need something more powerful that will talk about the interior of a data set. And that's what standard deviation and variance will do for us. Now, they're not separate concepts, they're actually very much tied together, and they're both tied to the idea of deviation. So when you deviate from the mean, that's how far your data point is from the mean. And the way we figure that out mathematically is to take the difference, in other words, to subtract. So you take your value minus the mean. In other words, x minus x bar, or x minus mu, depending on you know what data set you're looking at. But that's what we want to do. All right, so we want some number that's going to tell us the deviation for our data set, right? How far off was our data set? Were most values near the mean? Most values far from the mean? What's going on? And the standard deviation is going to be a number that's going to measure that for us. And the variance is just tied to that. All right, so we are going to one time and one time only do this all by hand. So we're going to show you how to find, oh my goodness, we're going to show you how to find by hand just once the standard deviation and the variance. Now keep in mind we're not going to do this by hand as a general rule, but it helps us to develop the idea and the concept here. Okay, so we're just going to look at these stats exam scores again. These are the same exam scores that we were just looking at, and these are the same values, and this is the same graph, it's just that I peeled off the algebra graph. So the algebra line is no longer there, the algebra data set is no longer there, we're just looking at the stats data set. Okay, so we have these values here, and I want the deviation for each of these values. So I want to take the value and I want to subtract away the mean. So 60 take away, if you recall, 74 was where the mean was for this data set. And that would give us a deviation of negative 14. So to look at it on the graph, the mean is at 74, the value is at 60. That distance, that horizontal distance between the two is negative 14. Similarly, on the positive side, you can look at the 100. The 100 take away 74 is 26. So that value is 26 points above the mean. Points was our unit, of course. You know, if it was feet, it could be feet, you know, whichever. Sorry, whichever unit you were given in the problem would be the unit you would use. But our unit is points, so that's what we're going to go with. So our deviation is negative 14 points or positive 26 points. All right, so if the purple one's on the low side and the blue one's on the high side, and you can see that we could continue this way for all the other data points. So 61's over here on the low side, 62, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we could find all of the deviations for every single data point. Some of them are going to be negative, some of them are going to be positive. So we would just fill all of them out. I'm not going to bother showing the calculation for most of them because it's pretty straightforward for all of them. It's just a simple subtraction problem. Okay, so we've learned some lessons. What does the deviation, the sign of the deviation, convey? Well, the sign conveys whether the data point is above or below the mean. So if your data point's above the mean, you're going to have a positive deviation. If the data point is below the mean, you're going to have a negative deviation. So that's pretty obvious. Now what we want to do is we want to find the average deviation, right? That's our goal. Oh, speaking of which everybody, we, we've already done part A and part B, so that's all finished. So, and we just did C. So we want to find the average deviation. I mean, that's our goal here. We want a number, a single number, that'll tell us, hey, on average, how far is everybody from the mean? Everybody close to the mean? Far from the mean? What's going on with the interior of this data set? All right, well, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, we want to find a mean, so that's what that big sigma stands for. It means that we're going to find the total. Right? That's what capital S, capital sigma means. It means you're going to find the total. Now, if we find the total, if we add all these numbers up, negative 14 plus 26 plus negative 13 and so on, can you take a guess of what you're going to have? Let me show it to you. All right, I've typed in all the numbers. I think I've done everything correct. Let's press enter and see. Yep, zero. That's what I get, a big zero. So when I add the deviations, I get nothing. And that makes sense, 
So think about this for a second. The red line, the mean, is the balance point. So by definition, don't the negatives and the positives balance each other? Huh? That's actually what we meant back in section 3.1 when we said that the mean was the balance point. It means that when you add up the negative deviations and the positive deviations, you're going to have zero. So the sum of the deviations is actually always zero. Of course, right? Because that's what it meant to be a balance point in the first place. Hmm. That puts us in a little bit of a pickle, right? Because this is what we want. We wanted the deviations, the deviations, these numbers right here in this column. They're a good measure of what's going on in the interior, what's happening to all these in middle points in between the min and the max. So this is going to be a good number, but we can't get what we want out of it because if we want to try to add them up and divide by how many there are, we're always going to get zero. Aha, so we use mathematical tricks, right? We're going to fix this problem mathematically. And the way we're going to fix it, well, there are two main ways. In, in algebra, you learn there's two ways to turn things positive. You can take the absolute value, right? Great idea. It's not actually um, that that as a whole other thing in, in statistics, which we were not going to cover, but there is a measure that does use absolute value, but it has some slightly different connotations. And the other option is to square them, right? Because when you square something, you're going to turn it positive. So that's what we're going to do. Um, for various reasons having to do with calculus, that's the way most of us begin. And absolute value ones we don't deal with unless you're in a stats two course, for example. If any of you have ever had calculus, it has to do with the fact that parabolas have a nice curve, whereas absolute values are kind of a V-shape, and that V-shape is problematic in calculus. But again, if you haven't had calculus, don't worry about it. Suffice to say that we are going to square all those deviations to turn them positive, and then we're going to find the sum of that. So I'm going to take my deviations and I'm going to square them. Crafty, huh? Because it's going to turn negative values positive. So that would take negative 14, I square it, it turns into positive 196. I take 26, I square it, well that's obvious, it's 676, right, because 26 squared is um, already positive. If I take negative 13, negative 13 times negative 13 is positive 169. So you can see what's happening, right, all the negative values will turn positive and all the positive values will stay positive. The rest of them you might know from your times tables, those are the only ones that might have given you oop, a little bit of grief. Sorry about that. So it's 81, uh, 121, 256, 144, 100, 4, and 9. There they are. Great. So now what happens when I add those up? So let me go grab a calculator. And I'm going to type those in and add them. So give me one second. There, I've typed all the values in. So now when I press Enter, I get the grand total of 1756. Now we're getting somewhere because that's not zero, which is very, very helpful. And it's this number we're going to use in order to develop our ideas of variance and from their standard deviation. But this is how to calculate it just one time by hand.